Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, another new video. And in this video, we're continuing the monitoring uh, series. We covered about uh, what is cloud monitoring, server monitoring. We learned about application performance monitoring. And in today's video, we are tackling a very crucial aspect of business and IT operations, which is known as incident management. So if you have ever faced like a sudden uh, breakdown in services or emergencies that let's say disrupted operations, you know, basically you will know how vital a swift response is. So you have to stick around to learn how to handle such crisis uh, effectively. And um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. You can check out the previous video as well. And uh, we're going to be utilizing Site 24x7 on all in one monitoring tool that you can get started with for free. Obviously we play around with the platform as well in these uh, tutorials. And if you want to use it, check out the links in the description below to sign up for your organization. Let's get started. Okay, before we get started, what do we mean by incident management? It's very simple. It's just a process that is being used by organizations to respond to unexpected events or disruptions that can affect your services. So it basically involves identifying, analyzing, and correcting the hazards to prevent a future reoccurrence. Something went down, something went wrong. You think about it, you identify what happened, you analyze how it happened, what took place, and then you correct it, right? Very simple stuff. So these incidents can range from, let's say an example, uh, software malfunctions to like unexpected downtimes, oftentimes also like cybersecurity breaches, things like that. So far so good, let's move forward. So why are we talking about this? Why do we care? Why is incident management important? Well, just like, you know, there are emergency services in, in a city, incident management teams acts that like acts like the first responders within an organization. So they make sure that uh, normal service operation is restored as quickly as possible. They also minimize the impact of uh, like the negative impact on business operations. And they also effectively handle incidents, um, you know, that have preserved customers' trust and compliance with the regulations. Cool. So really, really important, you know, things go wrong, you, you need you need the support, but how do you actually do it? What is the structure like? What is the incident management process typically like? So there are a few steps you need to take. We'll talk a little bit about tools and technologies as well. The first one being identification. There are total five steps. Identification, so detecting and reporting the incident. What went wrong, report it, identify it. Second one is assessment. So here you can evaluate the impact and urgency. Third one is response, taking action to mitigate the impact. So you're like, okay, what are we doing to mitigate this thing that went wrong? Fourth one being, maybe you can guess, Resolution and recovery, things went wrong, maybe it did some damage, you recover, you restore to normal service. Last one, fifth one is the review. So analyzing the incident for lessons learned and process improvements so that it doesn't happen in the future. Cool, all right. Now what are the tools and technologies that people use? Well, usually uh, there are automated systems for incident detection and notification. There are also like ticketing systems to track incident progresses and accountability. Uh, you also utilize communication tools to keep the stakeholders informed throughout the process. Companies also have their own public uptime uh, pages. So you can check the whether you know the services of the company are functional or not. It's like an up, uh, up, up page uh, that you can find on most uh, you know service providers. And that's essentially, you know, how we get started. So type site 24 X seven is what we're going to be using uh, to demo this. You can also sign up links in the description below and uh, yeah, for your organization. And by the way, it's free for you to get started. So that's what we're going to be looking into. Before I move into the demo, I want to share a bit more about the mistakes that people make like common pitfalls and also some of the best practices that people should follow. So when you're setting up an incident management system, some of the best practices you need to follow are like, for example, the first one is you have to establish clear protocols and communication channels. Okay, that's the very topmost thing you have to do. Next one being you have to train your staff regularly on their roles during the incident. If this thing happens, 
who is the person responsible. If they are out of office, then who is the other person responsible, right? So there should be clear roles defined. Next one is you should develop a comprehensive incident response plan that includes all these stakeholders. The customer shouldn't be like, okay, services went down, what's going on? The team is not replying, company is not replying, we have no idea, because then you will lose your customers. And that's not cool, right? And some of the common mistakes that can hinder effective incident management include underestimating the importance of a well-defined process. Please don't do that. And also neglecting to update and test incident response plans regularly. Some people are like, okay, you know, we might not need this or it has never happened or it's being careless. Don't do that. And one thing I already mentioned, this is something I'm mentioning again and again, because it's very important. Poor communication during an incident that leads to confusion and delays and also loss, loss of trust. It's very hard to gain trust back, believe me. So make sure you're being you know, empathetic towards your users and customers and uh, community members as well. Cool, that was it. But uh, let's take a look at demo uh, using Site 24X7. Okay, this is what the platform looks like. And here, as you can see, I can check my alarms currently live, maintenance, and as you can see, this is what I meant. So these are the alarms that you know went off, like the red ones you can see, 91, which are uh, you know quite bad. So this site did not respond within 30 seconds. So outage reason is given, a category is given, alarm is given, and you can also assign a technician for it, okay? So, this is the overall uh, how it looks like. And here you can assign a technician. You can select a technician, like if you have any added over here. And uh, you can also pick this alarm, unpick this alarm, you know, do a bunch of things over here. So for specific alarms, you can see there's a summary, alarm details, web page URL, what happened, uh, the site is not respond, uh, responding, downtime, the total duration of the downtime, the location which is affected, so that is being given as well. So in the Los Angeles data center, things are not looking good. And you can definitely filter, you can see, I want to see Los, Los Angeles, number of requests and stuff, you can add in your comments. And infrastructure events, you can check out, you know, uh, what, uh, what happened. Here you can see. Right? So when something goes wrong, you have to see what happened before it that led to it being down or something being bad. So broken, broken link count exceeds one. And obviously there's a bunch of customization available for you to filter it out because this can get a little bit overwhelming. And here you can check the graphs and um, you know um, other things um, as well and filter it out. Outage history, as you can check out the full history over here. Once it gets resolved, you will be able to see it over here as well. And the inventory meaning, uh, you know, just the locations and uh, the URL and uh, all the other information about it. And obviously you have your log reports as well. And uh, your alert logs as well that are, you know, as you can see currently loading, which you can download as CSV as well. You can select the dates and see what, uh, what went right and what um, what went wrong. So that was the individual piece. That was the overall picture as well. From here also you can filter out the active alarms, but uh, that's what I wanted to show you. And a bunch of other things you can do. We already spoke about APM, we talk about servers, Kubernetes, we talk about cloud, networking, application logs, reports is also something that you can check out for you know, advanced analytics you can can do things like that. But yeah, uh, this is basically what I wanted to show you. And you can also schedule a maintenance um, to let people know that we are scheduling maintenance, give it a description. You can also make it recurring and, uh, you know, uh, like various templates and all these other things. But yeah, that's what I want to show you. And uh, you can see overall pretty nice uh, dashboard and uh, you can filter the categories as well add categories. I spoke about it in the previous video that make sure you don't have uh, too many alarms going on. Make sure that it's um, only the relevant ones. But yeah, that's basically about it. 
All right, so that was about Site 24x7. If you want to check it out for free, play around with it, get some hands-on experience, links can be found in the description below. What, the, what does the future look like? I think people are talking about AI quite a lot. So I would say when we talk about the future of incident management, it looks to maybe the integration of more advanced technologies like machine learning, AI, uh, to predict and prevent incidents before they even occur. And this basically enhances resilience and operational efficiency. So yeah, age of AI, let's see see how that goes. I'm very excited. And uh, I would just like to end with, let's, um, yeah, I would just like to say that, always remember that when we talk about the world of operations, being prepared is not just an option, okay? It's a necessity. I would say stay proactive, stay prepared, and ensure that your organization can respond swiftly and efficiently to any incident and uh, having good visibility is very, very important. I hope this video was helpful. If you need any more information, let me know in the comment sections below. Links uh, for resources can be found in the description below for platforms like Zoho Size 24X7 that you can check out. And uh, stay tuned for the future videos in the series and you can check out the previous videos in the monitoring series as well. And also the DevOps Bootcamp playlist. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.